Manny and I were working on the seat belts, and first I want to say thanks to Eric Chavez. He sent me a pair of HS seat belts, and I was trying to determine why mine didn't work. And these little gears that are attached to the seat belt, I was looking at it, you can tell this one here is broken. Let me go ahead and pull it out so you can get a better look at it. Okay, this is what one looks like normally. When this is spun, this is when you pull the seat belt away from the assembly, it spins it out. And this little coil reel will spin back and it'll pull the entire assembly back in. On the one that was on my seat belt, it had snapped. A piece of it had broken off. You can see it was no longer, that's why the belt wouldn't retract itself in. So I had to figure out, um, these belts were locked. We are trying to figure out why and we couldn't get it out. But after removing this and also the little magnet with the ball, we were able to diagnose why we couldn't get those back in. And I actually removed that little white unit and I applied it on my SI belt. And I have it retracting now. It doesn't go in all the way, I don't know. It's just because the belt's old and it had been hanging out for so long. So I'm gonna leave that one alone. I just wanted to show it for, for usage. And I'm gonna get the HF one because that one does reel in all the way and just get the gearing put back on. And I got that blue HF belt swapped on. Works perfect. Now this car can be safe to drive again. I know the original belts have a lifetime guarantee slash warranty on them. This car is not street legal. One of the reasons I'm not driving it over there yet. Once it is, I will put that belt back on, take it over to Honda one day and see if I can go ahead and get that one repaired as well. Just so we have an extra belt, I can possibly use it on someone's different car or contribute it to our community somewhere. So we're gonna work on getting all those parts on that we talked about at the end of last week's video. Water pump, timing belt kit, seals, headlight harness, main fuel relay put on. We're also gonna fix any wiring that might need to be fixed, such as some of these this socket is just broken on one side. I'll go ahead and replace that. Um, this one looks like it's okay. All the other wiring here is all right. This is for the windshield wiper squirter. We don't need that. There's nothing here installed. This side, I got a little bit more work to do. Looks like the corner lights, there are none of the sockets remaining. One of the light bulbs, uh, one of the wires is missing on the socket, so I just pulled off the socket alone. Those are okay. I'm gonna try to diagnose the fan if I can get it to work. If not, I'm just going to hardwire it to the battery and we can turn it on whenever we're driving the car just for the meantime while we make this first track event. I don't want to get any of these hoses replaced. I'm going to swap out this gas line right here. This one looks like it might be potentially leaking a little bit. I know I have an extra SI one. So I'm just going to take care of that, swap it over, and then clean up whatever else I can and try to get this car looking uh, more like a, a car again, potentially bang that down. I'm gonna drain the, the radiator anyway so I can change the water pump, thermostat, and all these hoses that are that retain any sort of coolant in the engine bay. The first thing I tackled today was trying to get the front core support straightened out. That way I can have the T-bar straightened out as well. I bent it. This, I just used my hammer, was hammering on it jumping on it up and down with my legs, trying to put my weight on it. It's really it's really not that thick here, so it's pretty flimsy, easy to bend down. Now I'm able to secure it. I don't have the bolts all the way in, but it's secured where it needs to be. The radiator's not moving. I actually hammered down this little lip. It seemed like it was a little close to the radiator. So now it's, it's it has plenty of room. I don't want it rubbing, obviously rubbing and vibrations could create a hole, especially on this plastic radiator. And I also have the little radiator uh, mounts in place, the little rubber, little rubber, uh, I guess, gaskets that sit there which hold it into place. So the radiator's set. Now I can move on to something else. I was digging through my bin of parts and I believe I found, yeah, this one will work, the way it bends, just like the old one. I wanted a new gas line, let me show you why. At this side, it's perfectly fine still, but over here, see how it's a little wet? Right now it's pushing on it. And you can see how it's tearing. And then it just gets a little wet there. So I would hate to see how that does once it's heated up and driven on the track. Right there you can see there's a gas just coming out. 
So it's one of the reasons I'm replacing that. Who knows how much longer that's gonna last. I got all the coolant hoses removed. Now I'm gonna start replacing all of those. What I use is just some generic tubing. This is from O'Reilly's, this one's from AutoZone. I've come to realize I don't think AutoZone sells a 5 8 inch size. But I got five feet of it. It only came out to $8.45. Same with AutoZone, it was the exact same price for five feet of the 5 16 Came out to $8.45 also, so it's $1.69 per foot. This is probably one of the easiest ways to go about replacing your, your coolant hoses. Instead of buying the pre-made ones from Honda, it can be, I guarantee you it's gonna be a lot more expensive buying the Honda hoses, and I've done this over and over again. The only one that you do need is that U-shaped one, uh, that which goes from the thermal housing to the bottom of the intake manifold. That one you kind of have to buy because you can't really bend this, it's just gonna kink the hose at all. The coolant hoses and the gas line are finished up. Now moving on to the timing belt water pump and tensioner. Just pulled off the valve cover and it looks pretty clean in here, which is it's a good sign. Definitely not a lot of staining or anything, but usually these JDM motors don't have a ton of mileage on them, so it's really hard to determine, but it looks pretty clean. The timing belt is an original Honda, and if you look, it has the marks on here, so I think, obviously it's never been changed before, any of these seals, maybe even the valve cover gasket, some of the spark plug tubes, and the cam seals we're gonna change because we have no idea if they're leaking or not. I'm just trying to avoid potential Damage and last thing I want to do is destroy this engine. This engine is it's relatively expensive if you think about it So why not just change out the belt and The pump and tensioner at the same time just have a little bit of peace of mind with a brand new one taking it to the track for the first time So I'm gonna get this swapped out really quick. It's easy on this car because we don't have The AC compressor the power steering none of that's here. All we have is just the alternator belt which is um, maybe you guys are familiar with how to do it. You just loosen up. There's a bolt here or, or nut, you know, and sometimes there's different configurations of 12 and 14s. It should be a 12 on top here. Then on the bottom, right over here, you have the bolt which slides through, has a little squared end, it has a 14 millimeter nut here. Once you loosen up both those, you, that's how you tension the alternator back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and get those loosened up, slide the belt off, and then this cover is actually just hanging here. There's nothing holding it on. I'll see if I can do something about that. I don't know if I can because there's no plastic cover on the inside. So I may just put it back on with the valve cover because it does hold it in place and does give it a little bit of protection even though there's some opening in there. And the bottom one as well. It looks like, yeah, that one is held on. You can see the, the bolt head right in front of my finger there. So really easy to access all this really quickly. And one tip, it's easiest if we're just changing the belt pump and the seals. Go ahead and set it where it needs to be. Like this is top dead center, both are facing up. On, let me see if you can see, let me zoom in. Yeah, you can see it down there. Right in front of my finger, you'll see the little dash and it lines up with the little marking on the cover right there. So go ahead and set it to where it needs to be. That way when you replace everything, it's so much easier just to get it running again and set back up. Moving on a little further, I've got a lot finished. Got the cam seals changed, water pumps removed, tensioners also taken off, and I already changed the front main seal. So now I just need to reassemble everything. One thing I thought was interesting when looking at the bearings, the new one, listen to the old one. Obviously, I think the bearings are on their way out, so it's good that I replaced that because if this fails, your timing belt will snap because this is not spinning anymore, it's gonna lock up. This can be a cause of the belt snapping. So I think it's smart that I'm changing this out and the one that I got, it's actually a Koyo as well, exact same replacement. One reason I chose this water pump, if you look at the original one, it has that 22T on it, has the Japan stamping, then also, uh, I don't know, maybe that's the brand that it was back then. The new one, the NPW, is also has a 22T stamp on it, the NPW, but it's also made in Japan, so the, it's probably an equivalent of an OEM water pump. I think it should hold up just fine and have a great quality and the way it's built and the standards that they hold it to. So all those parts are finished. Went in and used some new paint, 
marked off the cam gear bolts. If you want to make sure if those move, I can go ahead and tell in the future. I did torque them. Tensioners tightened, double checked, timing twice. It seems to be perfect. Removed all the slack from the belt. One thing I like to do when tightening the tensioner, just a little tip. If you have the tensioner loose, go ahead and crank the crank pulley bolt just a little bit so it pulls all of the slack off of the, the front side of the engine and moves it to the back where the tensioner is. Then tighten your tensioner. That makes it so much easier, I feel like, to remove any of the slack within the belt. Now I'm just going to put on the valve cover. Very simple. Get that set up. Then I'm going to get the radiator and everything put back together here and see if I have a little bit more time to work on that wiring right now. I'm finished putting it back together. Got the radiator filled with coolant. I reused the coolant because I want to make sure everything is, there's no leaks. Everything's running the way it should be. And then I'm going to do a flush uh, the next chance I get when I get outside because I want to get all that old fluid out and had a lot of like like rust and corroded looking water in there when I drained it. So I'm just going to reuse that for now and then we'll do a flush on the next day I get off. But I'm going to start it real quick and just make sure there's no leaks and everything's running okay. Everything seems to be okay. Timing set. I will do ignition timing when I get a chance. Coolant, haven't seen anything leaking. It's been running for about 10 minutes now, just idling. So now I can actually move on to trying to figure out the fan. I have the fan hardwired right now, I just have it on. But looking at the wires here, they're just kind of a mess. It looks like some melted. So I'm going to have to go through and redo all those and see if I can't get the fan working appropriately. But I'm going to finish up these headlights, try to get the bumper and everything back on next. Two initially coming from your Civic or CRX, black and green. Very, very simple. We're going to wire those up to the black and green on the new corner light socket. The red... I was wiring up some of the lighting. I was converting these to... Uh, being a full-time running light, also blinking using the, the EG corner light sockets. Then I moved over to this side and I was trying to tackle these wires that are, like, I guess shorted out. And I found, there's a two here that just kind of lead to nowhere. I think these are the fan. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I found one here. See this one right here? This one goes all the way back. It's the only one, it's a black and yellow wire. I traced it back to the wiring harness here. And coming into the cabin, you can see it right there. See where it's kind of messed up? So the wire, wire comes all the way in here and then it goes somewhere into the rest of the wiring. I am not gonna tackle it today. It's gonna take me a lot longer just to take all of this out. And then I spent the last hour already trying to pull all those wires out and get them around the, the brake lines and the proportioning valve. I don't have time to tackle it now. This is going to be something I'm going to have to do after the first event. I just am pressed for time. So we're going to leave that for now. I am going to snip the wire at the other end. Same with those two just dangling there. I don't want anything else shorting out. The car seems to run fine without it. I'm just going to hardwire the fan to the battery when we're using it. Thank <laughs> you. 
went ahead and made a little mesh grill really quick. I like to do that just to protect it from any sort of debris that might get kicked up and potentially damage the radiator while either driving to the track or on track. And since this stuff is so easy to cut, I can actually cut it with scissors. Once you actually put the scissors on there, you can cut it. I made a little, a little plate right here. Not necessarily a plate, but a screen, I'm sorry. I'm gonna mount it right in front of the timing belt. I'm gonna get it put on real quick and I'll show you exactly how it looks. And here's what I meant by making a little screen for the timing belt. So I was missing that inner plastic cover. The timing belt is still exposed. So just in case a rock jumps in there, I don't want it skipping a tooth, breaking the belt. I think this will completely protect it. It's pretty strong. And I'm using the two holes for the power steering bracket and one for the condensed, the compressor. And I just kind of wrapped it on the sides and it's really easy to bend because it's not super duper strong. But I think it'll provide more than enough protection just in case something does like hop up in there. I had removed the rear panels because I need to access the seat belt and change it. I thought I wanted to leave them out, but looking at it, I don't really like the way it looks. I think it looks cleaner with the door panels and then these rear panels. I have it hanging here, and if you look, they're so lightweight. They weigh, what is that, like four pounds? So eight pounds total just to keep those in. I think it'll just look a lot nicer. Plus, uh, it'll probably help with a little bit of uh, sound deadening, uh, any like noise from the exhaust and the wheels and suspension back here.
And here's a look at my old Y49 seats. The passenger is in decent shape, but it does have this bolster up here, which is a which torn up from the sun. That one should be an easier repair because these two are fine. If I could just find some good material, have a shop fix that. Driver's seat, a lot more wear and tear, and that's why we're putting this into the track car. If these get a little bit more torn up, it's perfectly fine. And these two, I think they'll look great in my Y49. It'll just be a nice upgrade for that car. And just a little updated progress. I ended up purchasing some seat covers, only $13 for the pair. Just so it looks a little cleaner, plus I want to still protect these seats because I may be able to use those in the future to get them reupholstered. I don't want to damage any of the material still. Plus I just think it looks a lot cleaner. Vacuumed in here, put the cover. I drilled a little hole on the cover so I could now read the B16 ECU if I get a check engine light. Put all the plastics back in, the shift boot correctly. And I was fiddling around with some of the wiring. And then, I believe part two, there was a clip here that had these two wires on it. And so I was looking at it and I was thinking, like, where are the reverse lights? I couldn't seem to find them. So I went ahead and found these wires come from the transmission. Just went ahead and plugged them into those lights just to see if it worked. I have the car in reverse and the ignition's on. And that's what that was. It ended up just being the reverse lights and they had a weird connector onto it. Maybe they had a hydraulic transmission at some point or at least the hydraulic sensor that was coming out that has a little different plug. So I'm gonna find a plug and then wire those up correctly. That way I have the reverse lights also working. And then the O2 sensor wiring, I ended up wiring that back down and plug that one in also. Even though I wasn't gonna check engine light for it, I just wanted to see if it was uh, gonna not come on at all with being plugged in now. And lastly for today, just showing that I installed my Energy Hub Quick Release and Momo Wheel. These I had from my 90 Civic Si. They came on the car when I bought it. So I just set them aside and kept it. Figured I'd be able to use it eventually one day. And also, Nate and Tech sponsored me this cup holder. Kind of a neat little upgrade for the car. It'll help make it just slightly a little more comfortable to and from the track. And that wraps it up for today, guys. Tune in next week. We're going to finish up all the essentials to get this car fully roadworthy. Change the oil, transmission fluid, coolant system flush, and I need to figure out something for the fan, which I think I'm just going to do a toggle switch where the climate control used to be. We'll see you guys then. Take care.